All righty. All righty. Let's take it live. Start the recording devices. Backup recorder running. Get the microphone adjusted. Hallelujah. All righty. Let's see all the got. dials and pegs and... Yep, getting it all working, working the way it's supposed to work. Kick it in gear for all the people tuning in to watch. Our thousands of adoring fans out there. <laughs> you never know, we might have thousands that just listen rather than come to the show live. Well, there is a lot to do listen. It's The, the show is downloaded a lot every week, so whether mm. they listen or not is a whole other question, but they're downloading it, so maybe they just sort of subscribed to it and forgot. I have no idea. Could be. I have a bunch of podcasts that I'm su subscribed to, but but do they download? Uh, do they download all the time? You got to delete them from your phone. Uh they did until I figured out the settings. Yeah, and lots of people don't seem to have don't seem to bother figuring out the settings till their phone till their phone fills up and they go, what What's taking up all this space? Why do I got all these podcasts I'm not listening to anymore? Yeah. The hell. All those all those other morons out there in the world. All right. Squirrel! All right, that's working. Everything else looks to be good. Excellent. It's gonna be a nice weekend to get away. I'm liking having the sun because I'm able to make sun tea. Mm. I like sun tea. I don't know why it tastes so different, but it does. Uh, because it's slowly, uh, uh, slowly made versus a hot water method. It's, it's so much tastier. You can, and it lasts for a while in the fridge, so. Oh, yeah. Well, even regular tea will last for a while in the fridge. But the thing is, when you when you heat it, you sometimes there's a possibility of burning the leaves when you use mm -hmm. hot water. If your water's too hot, you can burn the leaves and ruin the taste. Depends on how sensitive your taste buds are, though. But sun tea, it just slowly absorbs. You should throw something like echinacea in there or uh, mint with the uh, tea. Well, I'm making mint tea. Okay. Well, you should throw echinacea in with it, too. Echinacea, okay. Yeah. If you need some, I've got lots of echinacea I harvested, la I harvested last year. What does echinacea look like? Is it a flower? It's a flower. It's a pretty flower. Okay. It's a very pretty flower. I wonder if that's something I could grow in, in my slowly building up garden. Um, you'd have to go buy yourself an echinacea, an echinacea plant okay. to, uh, get started with it this year. It takes, echinacea takes a couple of years to get started, so. Definitely we're buying the plant then. And you want to put it in a pot that you're going to keep it in? Like, I've got, you could, you could look on my, on the tavern, one of, somewhere on the tavern I've got, uh, echinacea. Let's see here. That's what th those are the flowers that were growing in the toilet at the tavern. Oh, cool! Let's see. I wish I could fix up my backyard to be a beautiful garden. Go back to my. Let's go way back to last year's pictures on uh, on it. There's Otis. He's dead now. Uh oh. The llama. Oh, okay. Oh, he got old. He got old and died. They found him. They found him dead this year. Aw. At least he got to have a great life. Yeah, well, he's he's been hanging around. He'd been hanging around the range for a couple of decades. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's some echinacea flowers right there. Oh, they look like giant um daisies. Yeah, they're called well those ones look like daisies. Where's the where's the ones that look like daisies? Some of them look like daisies. So there's a daisy one. But I've got others. I took a lot of pictures of the echinacea flowers. It looks like I didn't upload them here. Hmm. It looks like I didn't upload. Oh, no, let's see. No, okay. That's definitely not echinacea. <laughs> no, that's not echinacea. Let's see. Here. Looks like a good barbecue, though. Yeah, that was a good barbecue. Definitely some good barbecuing. Oh, I got echinacea. Oh, there we go. There you go. Purple daisies. 
Yeah, purple, purple giant purple, daisies. Purple giant daisies. Okay, I don't have I don't have any. <laughs> that's just one of the pictures I have for. Yeah, purple giant daisies basically. But there it's called the cone flower because it's got that big cone on it. Mm, that makes sense. But Well, little daisies have a cone too. Yeah. That's why you can make daisy chains because the cone makes it easier to pick out the center so you can string the the stem through. Ah, okay. But yeah, that's a uh, echinacea. It's 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 a really good. Uh, it's it's usable from uh, root to root to flower, but uh, to flower stem to petals. The root the root is actually stronger and better, but you can't harvest the root until after the plant's been growing for two years. So I've heard about echinacea using it for like your health and stuff. What does it actually do? Uh, it's good for colds and flus. It's high in vitamin C. It's, oh, okay. it's it's what you it's what people take in little pill form when they're taking their vitamin C and echinacea and other things in the winter time to stay to stay healthy. It okay. comes it comes from this plant. Cool. You know, and you get a much better version of it when you grow echinacea yourself. Oh. That and it's pretty. Yeah, it is pretty. I want, I want purple giant daisies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my echinacea is coming back already this year. It'll, it'll be quite nicely. Nice. So you keep it in the pot, and this year, at the end of the season, this year I'll be I'll be digging it up and harvesting the root, and then replanting half half the root. I'll keep and harvest, and then uh, dry and dry and uh, dehydrate to to uh, put into turn into teas. I'll be able to make a lot more teas this year because my herbs are doing better this year than last year. If I recall, when you're growing any kind of herb, you want to have them growing for a couple of years before you really start harvesting them. Yeah, yeah well, it pre uh, pretty much any perennial plant, you want, a, you want a couple of years of life in it so it has a very strong root system. But last year, my herbs didn't do very well because they I kept forgetting to water them. This year, I've set them up on the auto-watering system. So I'm so happy I haven't killed anything yet. Mm. <laughs> I usually kill all my plants, but I'm doing pretty good this year. <clears throat> I haven't good. managed to grow much from seed because apparently I suck at growing things from seed. Yeah, well, growing from seed's a little hard. I'm just now getting a knack of that myself. Some of my plants are a little behind because I planted the seeds too late or I, I, it was too cold and just many, many, there's many, many things that go into it. By next year, I'll do better. Every year is better. Mm -hmm. But I did learn a couple of really cool things about garlic. It turns out that uh, I was trying to figure out, it's like I'm looking on my balcony. I've got some uh, sunflowers growing. And I looked at them and said, why are they looking so bad? And it turned out, oh, damn, things covered in aphids. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do to get rid of the aphids besides just make a soap and water kind of thing to deal with them? Ladybugs. And, well, ladybugs, but you know, I've already <laughs> tried a ladybug thing on a balcony garden. The ladybugs all bugger off. <laughs> you don't get enough of them hanging around to eat the aphids. But I did find that uh, it'll help me with the oasis is that I can plant garlic in amongst lots of things because garlic drives off aphids and garlic's a really good companion plant for many, many plants. And I actually, I did, oh, cool. some, I did something by accident this year that turned out to be very good. And yeah. and it was mainly because I was trying to save some space and grow more stuff. I planted my garlic in amongst my strawberries. And it turns out planting garlic with your strawberries helps the strawberries grow better and keeps and keeps oh, a lot of cool. keeps a lot of bugs away. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. When you plant garlic and onions in amongst the, in amongst your in amongst your tomatoes and other plants that uh, are aphid uh, have can have problems with aphids and it helps drive away the aphids and the plants uh benefit from the garlic and onions growing in there that is really cool yeah so i'll be doing a lot more companion planting i got to do more research and write it down and do a better job of it get the companion planting in to have much better plants growing uh let's see so we got a show, then I'm escaping off to the oasis. A kid-free oasis time. Yep. 
Oh, I get to go and get blood work done today. Isn't mm. that exciting? It is. So exciting. <laughs> I'm sure you're having troubles containing your excitement, knowing that the vampires get to uh, pay you a visit. Yep. Absolutely. Ah, everything with doctors is so weird now. Yeah, it is. So I've heard anyway. <laughs> I've not experienced any of the issues. All right, we're coming up on it. It is time for some good music, bad singing. Off we go. Sacred rules of old, they went missing down Highway 49. Devils at the crossroads, sitting doing time. Preacher man discovered, passed down from saint to sage, like a kind hearted lover who's been lost on this stage, went missing. Down Highway 49 Devils at the crossroads Sitting doing time then it is time for us to get started ladies and gentlemen it is time for wordpress plugins a to z not z hmm. no sound escapes from wordpress it's episode 514 and we have plugins for showing your sales 
playing with Pinterest, inserting co code, stock control, and classic press options all coming up on WordPress plugins from A to Z. WordPress. It's the most popular content management and website solution on the internet. And with over 80,000 plugins to choose from, how do you separate the junk from the gems? Join us for a weekly, unrehearsed conversation about the latest and greatest in WordPress plugins. This is WordPress Plugins from A to Z. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be hiding out there on the globe today. Coming to you direct from the Brewery Overlook in beautiful Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, I'm John Overall. And with me is the ever-lovely... Amber Overall. And we have the usual great show for you. We are now 63 weeks in and still counting, but there is now a plan and life keeps moving forward, yet the show must go on. Time to get out the popcorn, sit back, and enjoy. Before we get too far down the line here, you know, a quick shout out to the No Agenda Show for their inspiration of ideas and the occasional stolen sound clip. Squirrel! And this is a value for value show. I look forward to everyone providing some back. Also, remember to hang around at the end of the show for our Q&A segment with Amber. Those of you listening here on the podcast itself, you get half the questions. The other half of the questions are left for those who show up for the YouTube channel and listen there. So if you want the other half of the questions, you got to go to the YouTube, go to the YouTube channel and watch the video. Just slide it all the way to the end of where the questions start. It's somewhere near the end. At any rate, with all of that, I keep getting told that it's time... Thank you for sharing, John. Now get down from that soapbox. This is number 22 of 52 episodes for 2021. It's episode 514, which in numerology equals one. The meaning for one in numerology essentially stands for self-sufficiency, new beginnings, lack of fear in learning, and exploring to obtain your goals. I personally feel this is a fantastic number to have for a show at this time of year. What was spring slowly turning into summer, greenery popping up everywhere, and the sun heating everything up. It almost feels like this island is taking a collective breath of relief. Time to start getting back out into the world and experiencing life again. And whether you get back to experiencing life in the great outdoors with a friend or on your own, be sure to turn off that media. No radio, no internet, just good conversation if you got a friend along or the music of the world around you if you're on your own. If you can't make it outside due to being crazy busy, maybe just open a window and turn off the media for about an hour every day. I'll bet you a beer that it helps. Rinse and repeat as often as needed. Oh, absolutely. Please, can everybody be quiet? Please be quiet. Shut up! Thank you. And now the WordPress news with John Overall. And Amber. Mostly Amber nowadays. <laughs> All right, we do have Amber news. Uh, WordPress <clears throat> news with Amber mostly. I didn't bring any news to the table this week, so we shall just go with what you brought. All right. Well, first thing I've got here is I have no idea how to say his name. Ujual Thapa. Uh, he's a co founder of WordPress in the Nepal community. Unfortunately, he passed away this last week. Now, I know that we're not in Nepal, but he seems to have been rather huge in the WordPress community. So figured I'd let anyone who's aware of him know about his passing. Hmm. Um, the next one I have is Google Chrome's Canary now has a feature flag to allow users to opt out. Now, for those of you that don't know what Canary is, it's essentially the raw and unfinished browser of the Chrome that we generally use every day. They up they update every night. Uh, there's a link about about it more in depth in the extra stuff if anybody is interested. And the fact that they have a flag to opt out of the flock here is kind of a positive thing, I think, because if they have a flag in this version, maybe they're thinking about bringing the flag forward into the everyday use version. Oh, maybe, maybe, but it's kind of an indicator to me that uh, their flock has flocking failed. Yeah, but I mean, still, I have a feeling they're probably going to stick with Flock because mm. maybe Flock is useful for somebody. Maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. But it's been so widely panned and nobody wants to support it. That uh, I, I think this was just one of Google's shots in the dark that went wild and bounced off a rock somewhere. <laughs> 
Well, I think it's awesome yeah. that that it's there. Well, it's good. Hopefully. It's good that they're making it so that people can opt out, and you know, you can bet that other browsers will, other browsers such as the one I use, Firefox, will follow suit and do something similar with it. Most likely, um, I know that that a bunch of uh, search engines and stuff have given you the option to opt out. Uh, the next one I have is. Heads up for everyone using Windows, there's going to be an update on June 24th. Oh, we will yay. have the new version of Windows available. Oh, yay. Yeah, they're being a bit hush-hush about what they have, but I've read of some <clears throat> rumors that there will be dual screen features in it, since that is the main thing that they were focusing on for Windows 10X before they nixed the Windows 10X. Dual screen features. I mean, yeah. I mean, what does that so mean? I run four monitors already. What does dual screen mean? Dual screen features. Uh, dual, mean? dual screen, from what I understand, is just for people who use uh, multiple monitors. Apparently, it does something specialized for people who use multiple monitors or uh, mm -hmm. for people who have, like, a tablet and then they need to also use the computer. Yeah. Now, I don't have a full comprehensive understanding of this because when I read it, it was just kept saying, dual screen, dual screen, and it didn't really explain it very well but there are some links in here and maybe somebody with a bit more geek speak fluency will be able to understand it better okay i have no idea it, i'm reading through skimming through the article i don't see anything that pops out at me all right so that's going to be their big thing the other it's like i'm i'm, I'm like well good what are they going to screw up they've already managed to screw something up in my outlook today i saw yeah. i saw some update and i went where what? And then all of a sudden, all my normal functions of my Outlook don't seem to work the way they do. Like when I reply to an email, I have it pop open into another window. Now it wants to do it right inside the thing. Like it's, and I got to go figure out how to turn that feature off again. <laughs> it's like Windows doesn't, Windows doesn't seem to think you know what you're doing when you set your settings a certain way. It seems to think you want them the way they want them done. <laughs> well, I guess to be fair, a lot of people don't really know what they're doing. Even if they don't know what they're doing, they might figure out specific ways of doing their settings and get them fixed the way they want them. And then Windows come along, comes along and undoes everything you've done. That is so frustrating when they do that. It, it's, I it, hate doing upgrades. That's why I hate doing the updates. I'll push this update <laughs> off as long as I possibly can again, which means I get another two months of peace because I just they forced <laughs> updates down my throat last week. Oh, jeez. After because you're, I think they max you out at two months with updates. Something like that. All right. So Google Voices concerns about Bill C-10 in Canada. Well, I can imagine they are voicing concerns about it. Yep. <laughs> it's, censorship, it's censorship at its finest. Yep. Uh, uh, so I put in a link of a basic breakdown of what Bill C-10 is in, in like human speak rather than the uh, lawyer speak. Okay. Well, this is something for folks to read, especially the Canadians that listen to this show here. Mm -hmm. You really got to understand Bill C-10, complain to your MPs, et cetera, et cetera, because this is going to, if this passes, it could make the internet in Canada unusable. Yes, yes, it could. Yeah. You know, and they're going to they're going to say it's all about, you know, forcing the big companies to do things. No, it's not. No, no, it's not. It never is. No. All right. Next one, Gutenberg brings in an image due tone filter. Alrighty. Yeah, uh, the duo tone filter is it's something that they've added into <laughs> into Gutenberg. Yeah, see, it's fun to play with. Yeah, I, I, I like these sliding things. <laughs> For people who are using Gutenberg, this might actually be a great addition. Especially if they're doing any kind of photography or they need to make something kind of cool looking. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's just a dew tone. It replaces the colors of your image with with dew tone colors. You know, the the thing okay. I'm playing with here on the screen, which is so funny, is that it's one of those little slider windows where you can put two images up that are that are the same image and or different. One of the cool ways I've seen, I think I reviewed a plugin that does this for WordPress a uh, long time back. Yeah, you did. And it's uh, being used by people who take uh, historical photos, and then they go take another photo of that historical site standing approximately the same place as the photographer took that original site, and they put the two photos up, and you can slide back and forth to see how everything changed over time. That is cool. There, there's, a, there's a website like that for Victoria. I can't remember the name of it, but it's really cool. The photographer who does that is just amazing. 
So the last one we have here is Tips Tuesday with Mayanna on BlogAid. Her site is awesomely helpful. And this week's Tips Tuesday have some pretty awesome things that she covers, including site speed, future plugins, and Flockball. There's a bunch of different things in here. So if anybody is looking for a little bit of extra help, go check out her site. Yeah, she does a lot of really good work there, putting out this content. She's been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. She does great work, so... And some of so her training, for, some of her training stuff is well worthwhile. Definitely, I'm I'm using it. Alrighty, and you so, do go ahead. So I was just gonna say for the extras, there's a breakdown of Bill C10, uh, online WordCamp, local trend report, cyber attacks, random things. All right, make sure you folks go check out the show notes to find all those extra links in there. So this is where we like to acknowledge all the people who donate time, talent, or treasure to the show. It's time to donate to WP Plugins A to Z. Absolutely. Time, talent, or treasure. This show is a value for value show, meaning if you're getting any value out of it, give us some value back. That value can be... You know, a few bucks here. Maybe it's maybe it saved you five minutes of time. What's that worth to you? A cup of coffee? Hey, donate five bucks to the show. Or if you're so inclined, you can donate more to the show. But we do like to also talk about the artists who are donating their talent to the show. This week's artwork, amazing piece of artwork. We've got some really cool art coming in now. I was I was I was kind of stumped today on what art to choose for the show. This week's artwork comes to us again from Angel Lamu. And I'm going to make a mouse pad out of this one. It is That is my favorite one that he's turned in it recently. It is such a cool <laughs> piece of art. It's it got this glowing egg with the with the uh, WP logo in the middle of it. He's he's giving it a green hues and it's just an amazing piece of art. I'm going to I'm going to make a mouse pad out of that. That's one that belongs on a t-shirt. You know, it's just it's just awesome. Really awesome piece of artwork. Uh, our artwork is getting better and better. We greatly appreciate the artist taking the time to to uh, create this art and donate it to us. This is the art that goes up with every show that goes out. We change our artwork every show, uh, much like a much like the other qu higher quality uh, shows out there. And I just really like this one. If you want to see the other artwork that's been donated to us, go click the link in the show notes to the show artwork submitted. And Angel has produced quite a bit of art this month. I've got to move it to June, but he's even given us a couple other cool ones in there. So really great artwork, a whole bunch of artwork there from the month of May and the first uh, first couple days of June. But thank you very much, Angel. We greatly appreciate your uh, donating your talent to the show. Executive producers of the show, those are anyone who comes in 50 bucks or more. If you donate $50 or more, you get a show, <laughs> or you get a show, get a note read out on the show with any links in it that you want. A big thank you to all the producers out there who've come in below 50 bucks. You know who you are. Thank you very much. It stays anonymous under 50 bucks. And there's a couple of folks out there that donate five, 10 bucks a month. So, hey, greatly appreciate it. It means you appreciate what we're doing and it helps, helps you out. So, thank you very much. You know, if you want to donate and support this show, you want to donate time, we'll talk about time later when we get down to the contest, but there's other things that the show needs done, which is, which is time. You know, thinking of time, you know, if somebody out there is, uh, has a way of, uh, you know, selling t-shirts, you know, make a deal with the artist for the uh, artwork, pay them something for the artwork, pay us something for uh, helping bring it to you and do donate it. We'll, we'll take the no agenda, the no agenda method. They've got the no agenda, uh, no agenda shop where they have no control over it. They get the people who run the shop, donate to the donate money to the show and pay the artists for their artwork. Really great idea. It is. All right. So that's all we got there. <laughs> it's time for us to move on to what everyone shows up here, here for off into the depths of the plug in depravity. It is time for What have we got for plugins? Classic Press options. This week, nothing on Classic Press this week here. We didn't bring anything new. I'd made mention last week about CodePotent leaving the Classic Press system and putting his plugins up for adoption. Classic Press directory update. Other than that, there's really nothing else in Classic Press. So go check that out, uh, what we've got there. 
WordPress plugins, though, we do have some WordPress plugins this week. And the first one I've got for you here is called Recently Purchased Products for WooCommerce. It's a brand new plugin. And it was one that I thought was going to be really useful up on my site. And it will be if I put a little bit of time into the CSS. Basically, it just uses a short code. It creates a plugin, creates a short code, and it creates a list of the most recently purchased products from your e-commerce store. One of the limitations in it, as they mention here, when you read the notes, and it's not really crystal clear, but what it does, what I discovered it does, is it pulls just the first product from whatever recent orders have occurred. It doesn't pull several products from each order. It just pulls the first product from a recent order and it goes back a few orders and then it creates a list. It doesn't create a very clean list though. The list requires, it's gonna need some CSS to clean it up and make it look a little bit better, but it does work and it works really well and it's a really, could be a really great tool for you to help it help your store out. So at any rate, go check it out. Recently purchased products for Woo, and I give it a four dragon rating. And the first one I have is Pi Button. This is a totally free Pinterest button for your site. You can simply take the short code and place it uh, in any content you want people to be able to pin, or you can get fancy and set up so you can make specific pages some or all posts, even certain taxonomies are pinnable by enabling the hover pin option. If you want to get specific and a bit fancy, it can be a little bit of a pain to set up, but once you set it up, you just leave it alone. And when people hover over things, they, the little pin it button appears and they can add it to their pin chest. I personally would just add the code where I want it, where I want to have things pinned, but they teach their own. It's a great plugin, very well maintained. I rate this at five dragons. There you go. Go check that one out. All right. The next one I've got for you here today is another WooCommerce one. It <clears throat> is the out of stock badge. Very simple badge that goes over your out of stock items. It stands out a little bit more than the standard little red red warning that says out of stock. It puts this badge over the top of your image so that people know immediately that it's out of stock. Nice and simple, straightforward to use. Go check it out. Out of stock badge for WooCommerce and I give it a five, Dragon rating. And the next one I have is the same one that you had for the first one, which yeah. is recently purchased products for Woo. Well, let's hear your take on it. <laughs> well, I think that this would be really fantastic. I know that the few sites that I've been to, they give me my previously purchased thing and very useful. I love it. Uh, it's brand new. So I figure there will probably be a few bugs that they still have to work out. Um, the way that I saw it was you put the short code and you either get a grid or a list. When I checked it out, the grid actually looked really nice and they do have a way to customize the amount in the short code so you can have as many as 50 or more items that were previously bought. So when I was checking it out, it wasn't just the first item from every list. It was the last like 50 items that they bought if you want it to be that many. They, they put it automatically mm -hmm. at uh, like six. And the list is default descending, but you can change it to ascending. Okay, well, I so I, I didn't dig deep <laughs> enough into it then because I couldn't find a place where I could set it for the number of uh, products to show. Because when I installed it and activated it, it only brought in two products, and they were the first products on the last two orders that were made. You have to change it in the short code that they give you. Oh. So you have to actually go into the short. You have to go into the code itself, and where it says. Um, where it says a number, like there's a number there, and you change a number to whatever number you want to be, and then you change okay. uh, the well, the DES to AS A A S C. All right. Well, uh, well, descending or ascending, but that doesn't yeah. tell you how many it's going to grab. No, it. You tell it how many to grab. You can change it from oh. the uh, default number to whatever number oh, you okay. want. All right. Well, I'll have to dig into it into it deeper. It still does need CSS to make it look pretty, though. Yeah, it's a little, a little old school very cool. blocky but uh like, like i was saying it's got some bugs that it probably still has some bugs that need to be worked out the css is one of the issues yep so i rated it four dragons all righty all right the final one i've got for you here today is probably one i've covered before but it's time to bring it back again 
It's the Insert Headers and Footers by WP Beginner. It's a very nice, simple headers and fo footers insert plugin. And what that's for is sooner or later, you're building a website, you're gonna have to insert code into the header or the footer. Now, many themes have made that easier nowadays, but still there's some themes that don't um, make it easy or they don't have an option at all, or you have to go insert it somewhere into hard-coded into the template, which is a real pain in the neck. And if something changes, you could lose that code. This is a nice, simple plugin. Once you install and activate it, it gives you a spot where you can go to the plugin settings and it gives you a spot, a header and a footer block. You pump your code into the header of the footer blocks and then that code is inserted properly into your website when appropriate header or footer code. The most common use for this is Google tracking code and other bits and pieces of tracking codes that are used from all the various trackers that people set up. Uh, there's other things I've used it for. I can't recall them right now, but it is a great plugin. It is free and it works very, very well. And it's probably the one I use the most. I don't even use the theme ones anymore because again, if you change out the theme later and you've forgotten you've inserted header and footer code, you'll wipe that code right out when you change theme. So you should always use a plugin separate from your theme for doing the things you need done. Go check this one out. Insert headers and footers from WP Beginner, and I give it a five dragon rating. Lots of fives today. Yeah, well, it happens. So last one I've got is called presets. And this is, I could see this being brilliantly useful. <clears throat> this plugin was designed to allow you to fill out your WordPress um, uh, preferred settings and actually keep them so you can actually test things out like plugins and everything and everything without having to change the settings every time manually it was more designed for people who are like working on testing out plugins that require setting changes all the time rather than for production sites so you can upload and you can change things and your your preferred settings are already there so long as you have this plugin all set up it's a little tedious to set up but once it's set up, you just leave it alone and it will keep those settings. You can fix your settings every time without having to go in and manually do it all. It's totally free. Seems to work fairly well. I go to go and check this out. I rated this at five dragons. That could be very useful. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm still running an ad here. Are you tired of the same old web hosting? Not having the resources you need to run your website properly? Having a lack of control? Then you need johnoverall.com web hosting. Providing you with all the resources you need to smoothly run your WordPress website or classic press website. With strict limits on the number of clients allowed per server, johnoverall.com provides high quality, fast server performance. Visit johnoverall.com for web hosting that won't slow you down. Absolutely. Nothing but the best. All right. Listener feedback. Seems we have some this week. Yes, we do. This note was sent in by Angel Amu, one of our most loyal artists. He said, keep up the good work. Always love the show. And I have to say that Amber is really coming into her own as a co-host. She is getting better and better and is more knowledgeable each month. If she keeps this up, she will become a WordPress slash classic press consultant extraordinaire. Cheers, my friend. Thanks, Angel. I really appreciate hearing that. Sometimes I feel like my brain leaks out more information than I'm able to shove into it. Seems like at least some of it's sticking around, so that's always good. Yeah, that's always good. Thanks, Angel. Greatly appreciate that. Really, really great to hear from some of our listeners out there. Mm -hmm. All right. And it is contest time. It's a contest. Big thank you to Steve Goodtime and Brant Matthews for that jingle. And thank you to Charlie for coming to the aid of the show, helping us out, getting our contest rolling. We did take a hiatus there for a couple of months, and uh, Charlie is back with a, um, I don't know, with a vengeance. There we go, with a vengeance. And we have contests <laughs> again. You know, short thing about contests. Remember, folks. Participation in the contest, please just go go click and register for the contest once they're in. Now, our newest giveaway is one where we're giving away three lifetime licenses for Bloxy. 
It's cool. a blazingly fast, lightweight WordPress WordPress theme plugin. Um, it's built for the Gutenberg editor. Has lots of options to make it customizable. You know, Elementor, Beaver. It works with uh, Elementor and Beaver Builder and Visual Composer and, and Brizzy. So this is a pretty good one. It's for the Gutenberg editor, and it's going to help you create blocks. The contest, we're not going to start it until June 10th. That's the official start date of the contest. Um, we are, from for this contest, the Creative Themes HQ, the creators of Bloxy have, have generously donated three lifetime versions of Bloxy for you to enter a, to win. There is an agency lifetime licensed, valued at 299 bucks. A professional lifetime license at $199. It's a five-site license. And then the personal lifetime license at $149. It's a one-site license. So this is going to be a big one. This one is going to be very worthwhile to those of you out there building sites. <coughs> Everything from an unlimited license to a single site license. The Pro version has lots of added features in it. You know, custom code snippets, font options, header and footer functions, WooCommerce features and more we'll be opening this contest up on june 10th make sure you check our contest page for all the details to enter for your chance to win all right so we do have a really excellent contest to launch us back into the contest sphere so make sure you check that out folks and we'll be promoting it all over the place that sounds brilliant yeah it makes me want to say well i don't want to give those away why don't we just keep them for ourselves <laughs> You know, yeah, that's a, that's a, well, can we enter into the contest? No, no we're, not not. we're not allowed to enter. You know, we're, uh, we're, we're giving it, we're giving away. So, you know, it, it's really <laughs> sad because that's actually, that actually looks like a usable item. Very usable yeah, for, for developers or even someone just building out their own personal site. All right. We're going to cover up a couple of quick things before we, and before we uh, hit the uh, closeout credits, because we uh, do the closeout credits partway through the Q&A segment. So covering up in this episode, uh, the following plugins I covered up was the Insert Headers and Footers by WP Beginner, which I gave a 5 to, the Out of Stock Badge, which I gave a 5 to, and the Recently Purchased Products for Woo, which I gave a 3 to. And I covered presets. Yeah presets which i rated at five recently purchased products for woo which i rated at four and pie button which i rated at five okay and meetups well i don't have it officially put out there yet but there is going to be a bit of a, a locally wordpress kind of meetup on uh on july 10th it's uh, a bit of a meetup a barbecue it's a social event and it's going to be held at the Oasis. So, so folks out there that might be interested, reach out to me and uh, we'll get you uh, hooked up with how to get there to the Oasis. And remember, if you're not getting enough of us, you can join us for our other podcast, the live stream of the Rogues Tavern, Shooting the Shit at the Tavern, Tuesday evenings at 8 o'clock Pacific Time. 8 p.m. Pacific Time. All right. This is where we move along to... It's question and answer time. But Amber, <laughs> we got to get, get that re-recorded and have that added in there. We do. I mean, we could just record you and throw you in there. Yeah, well, that means I have to go in there and edit the file. We've already recorded me. All I have to do is just snip that out and turn it into a new cut, a new piece. Well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, I, I've, hit, I've right. hit it pretty good every week. You do, actually. Right on time and everything. Yeah. All right. So my first question for you. Oh, right. Before I start with the questions, if anyone out there listening has any questions that you'd like to have asked, send them in to me at amber at WPPRO.ca and I'll throw them up here. See if we can stump my dad. My first question for you is, when I first started working with you, I asked you what kind of computer I would need. You said to look at gamer computers. So, one, why are gamer computers good for this kind of work? And there's a second one, which is, is there another kind of computer that would work as well or better than gaming computers? Why or why not? Okay, 
Gaming computers are your high-end computers. They've got a very good video card, lots of lots of memory, fast hard drives. Um, why did the why do you want to use them for this kind of work? Because what happens when you start working, especially if you're doing desktop, if you're a laptop user, you're already doing things slowly anyway. But if mm -hmm. you want to get them done faster, you need a you need a desktop computer with two, three, four monitors, minimum of two monitors. Um, two, three, and four monitors makes it even easier because you can put stuff on different monitors and you can switch back and forth. But you need a gaming computer because you need the speed. You need the high-end video cards. You need the processing power because what happens inevitably is that you'll open up video editing software. Well, maybe not video. You open up, uh, um, not even audio, but you open up uh, photo editing software. You'll open up browsers and you'll open up, you know, every time you open up a new tab in your browser, it sucks more memory from your, pro from your system and processing time. Every tab you have in a browser, you know, it sucks up, it sucks up resources. When you start opening your email and all the other programs, you start opening, you get your FTP up and running, you start transferring files, you get all these things happening at once. You need a computer that has the power to keep running without slowing you down. And that's why a gaming computer is so good for this, because if you got a computer that's designed for the latest games, it's designed with high end power. It's designed for speed for all of that transfer of data and everything else you need. Is there another kind of computer that works as well? Uh, not as well, it works. It's like, I've done, I've done this with my laptop when I have to, and the laptop I have now is like seven years old. It's just really slow. It just takes a lot more time and I can't open as many programs at the same time. I have to close a program to open a program and then close a program to open a program. Because otherwise, they, otherwise everything slows down too too slow. So it's really kind of hard to say. There's not another computer that will work as well as a gaming computer, and you know, it depends on what you're looking for in gaming computers. Like, I've got my last computer. I could probably still be using my last computer, which I built seven years ago, which was really high end when I built it. But two years ago, I decided I wanted a newer computer, so I built a newer gaming computer, even bigger and faster. And that's basically all I've done with it. And you could take an older computer that runs really well and add a high-end video card, and that might give you what you need as far as the power you need. Because a lot of times, most of what happened goes on is the video card does most of the heavy lifting. So. Okay, so here's a question that's related to that. Um, when I was talking to someone about the kind of computer I was going to need, mm -hmm. they asked me, why do I need a gaming computer? Because the only real uh, huge thing about a gaming computer is the graphics card. Why is the graphics card the thing that you really, why, why is that one do the heavy lifting? Um, every monitor you use, your graphics card is drawing that monitor. Oh, okay. Your graphics card is, is drawing that monitor for you and every Every window you open, every program you open, every tab, your graphics card is doing all that processing for all the graphics. When you're doing video or photo photo editing, your graphics card is doing all the processing. That's why okay. you need a, that's why you need the the graphics card. They seem to forget then if they think it's only the video card, it's not only the video card in a in a gaming computer, it's the processor and the amount of RAM that the computer has. Like my computer now has uh, 64 gigs of RAM. You know, and uh, and I can't remember. I've got like a six gig video card now. Cool. Uh, so it's fairly high end, and I can't remember the processor. I couldn't afford the latest and greatest processor. I ended up with a um, <coughs> medium high end processor, and even my video card was a medium high end card. I, although my video card now, I could probably sell it for four times as much as I paid for it now, <laughs> considering the shortage of video cards out there. Yeah, a cousin of mine is having trouble finding his uh, f finding the the uh, different parts of his computer that he's wanting to build right now. Yeah, it's really hard right now. There's a shortage of chips everywhere, and yeah, and the shortage of chips means a shortage of chips for everything. So, mm -hmm. so, so my oh sorry, go ahead. My next question I uh, is how different would it be using and working with WordPress off of an OS like Linux? Do you think? Not, not any difference at all. 
No? There'd be no difference. It's just you're, you're in Linux and you're in Linux versus uh, Windows. Windows is just your computer's operating system. Linux is just your computer's operating system. That's your interface to the internet. And your, yeah. inter your interface to whatever programs you want. If you're li using Linux, you would have to learn the software that runs on Linux because most of the software I use doesn't run on Linux. That's the problem. Like most, I use a lot of Adobe software. I don't believe it runs on Linux. So you would have to learn the uh, options for it. I think that's more so along the lines of what I was thinking is how different would it be trying to do this with a different OS? Because I know that a lot of things don't work on something like Linux that work on Windows. Yeah. Well, w Windows doesn't, or my, uh, you got to remember that uh, WordPress is mm -hmm. actually running on, on Linux. Oh, I said, I didn't know that. The servers, my servers in particular, most everybody's servers, it's a version of Linux. Um, I can't remember what, what my thing is called. Um, uh, anyway, I can't remember what it's called right now, but it's a version of Linux runs my servers. And almost all the servers that run websites run a version or a type of Linux. You know, and that's... You know, so WordPress WordPress doesn't care. Like WordPress will run on a Windows machine. You can set it up. What WordPress needs to run, it needs a uh, it needs a it needs a uh, HTML server and it needs uh, PHP and it needs MySQL. It needs those three okay. things to run. So your computer is your computer is just the interface to access your Windows your your WordPress website. Okay, well that that makes sense. I just, for some reason I thought it would just behave differently. I guess that doesn't make sense my thought I had then <laughs> um my next question is uh using another OS like I don't know if you have or if you haven't but uh it, if you use a different OS is it harder or easier to keep uh your information secure okay this sounds like this is where we're going to close the show out Okay. And we'll come back to this afterwards. So let's uh, let a girl take us out of here and enjoy my shot. Reminders for the show. All show notes can be found at WPPluginsAtoZ.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the newsletter for more useful information delivered directly to your inbox. WP Plugins A to Z is a show that offers honest and unbiased reviews of plugins created by developers because you support the show. Help keep the show honest and unbiased by going to wppluginsatoz.com slash donate and set the donation level that fits your budget. Help us make the show better for you by subscribing and reviewing the show at Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and in the iTunes Store. You can also leave us a review on our Facebook page using wppluginsatoz.com slash Facebook. You can also watch the show live on YouTube, check out the screencasts, and training videos, and remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications of all new videos. Follow the show on Twitter at WP Plugins A to Z. John can also be reached at his website, johnoverall.com, or email him directly, john at wppro.ca. Thanks for joining us, and have a great day. Thanks for listening to the show. This show is copyright by johnoverall.com. So until next time, have yourselves a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be out there on the globe today. Alrighty. Um, let's see what we got here. You've got, uh, have you used any other OSs since you started working in this industry? If so, mm -hmm. was it harder or easier or the same to keep your information secure? If not, do you know from secondhand information, what, if any, the differences are in security for this industry? All right. Well, we'll start with the first part, other OSs. I have used other OSs over time. You, you actually use a couple of different OSs in your daily life. You know, you use Windows. Uh, your phone is an Android phone, so you're using a form of uh, Linux there. Okay. Um, it's it's not the OS 
that you're using so much is the interface. I myself have, um, my problem is, is I can't type very well. So I, I do Linux. I do use a different OS on my servers. I have, uh, it's not Linux. It's what is the bloody name of the operating system? It's, um, my brain. Well, when I wrote these questions, I was more so thinking of the different programs and the different things that you can get to work for, for your computer. I was thinking of, of the fact that things that work on my computer with its current OS won't work with a different OS. Yes. Uh, that's about as much as I know. So Okay, well, that's that's basically how it happens. All the OSs are basically sent OS is what I, is what I work with on my servers. It's sent OS is what it's called. It's a type of Linux or type okay. of Unix. It's a it, fuck off, would you? You silly bitch. <laughs> but she wants to be part of the show. I, she feels left out. She does. She shows up every once in a while and just pops in her her opinion. <laughs> okay. Um. At any rate, uh, the OSs I've used, I've I actually started to learn uh, Kali Linux one time, mm -hmm. uh, which is you know you know the the goddess Kali from. The god of, goddess of chaos, I think it's an, yes. uh, an Indian god, uh, goddess. At any rate, I yes. started to use. I started to learn Kali one time. I took one of my old laptops, wiped the hard drive clean, and started installing it to learn how to do it. Because that's one of the things you learn. You got to go through if you're going to learn security. And I started to learn security, but I got sidetracked and never finished it. But uh, I've used uh, Linux, uh, pure Linux about 25 years ago, briefly. DOS, which, you know, was the original, uh, which is what Windows is overlaid on top of is DOS. It's based upon that. Um, Microsoft DOS. There's there's so many. I've used uh, lots of different interfaces, but I, I ended up choosing Windows because I like a, a graphical user interface, which allows me to work a whole lot more efficiently because my okay. typing skills suck. If you got really good high-end typing skills, command line is the best way to go. It's like command line command line work is the best way to go if you've got if you've got mad typing skills. What is command line? Um, that's where you just type your commands into the computer and it does what you tell it to do and it works. Oh cool. It works so blazingly fast. You can do that with WordPress too. WordPress has command line functions available to it to make life even easier when you're doing when you're doing work on it. So, so it, you know, it's harder, it's easier, it's the same, you know, as far as security goes, um, security is uh, the same. It's the same, you're, you're still fighting the same security. You're fighting, you know, making sure that you've closed your ports, you're securing your, your computer, you've got firewalls, you've got protections against, uh, Viruses, you know, for a long time, all the Apple people thought they were they were protected because nobody ever attacked attacked them, but they never had any antivirus protection. We don't need that. Our 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 software is so good. In the meantime, the hackers had already hacked them, but they just didn't bother them because there weren't enough people to make the money from. Because hackers only go where the money's at. Yeah, you know, it's all about well, the money. They they go after the biggest targets. The reason why WordPress is attacked constantly is because it's the largest target. You know, which it's like the, Kendian said here, it could be argued that Windows is less secure because so many people are trying to break into it because so many people are using it. Well, that's exactly what it boils down to. It boils down to the most number of the, the, the most used operating system is the most attacked. It's like my it's like WordPress is the most attacked CMS because it's the most used CMS system. There's the most amount of money to be made hacking WordPress versus hacking Drupal or hacking, hacking um, whatever the other CMSs are. So it, it all boils down to, you know, what's the best target for hacking? So, yeah, security is no different in any of them. It's the same stuff. It's just done differently is what it, is okay. what it comes down to. It's all just different. And the OSs are all basically, when you boil them all down, they're basically the same. It's a command. It's an interface command so that you and the computer chip can talk to each other. You and the computer. It's the, the computer can chip can do the math much faster than your brain can do the math. Definitely. And produce and produce the results you need. And you got and we built interfaces on top of it to turn those results into pictures. All these pictures we see on our monitors are nothing but math. You know, it's all pure math. The computer doesn't understand anything. Ones and zeros. That's it. 
So it's like, which way do you want to pre to create your ones and zeros? What operating system works? It's like I talking to uh, the neighbor who moved out from next door from the Oasis. Turns out he was using, I can't remember what version of Linux he's using. He, he was using Linux as his home computer. And it's a new interface Linux, uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Ubuntu Linux, I think it is. It's really close to Windows in, in its functionality. It's a GUI interface has sets up. I've gone to a couple of them over the years. I've checked out one or two here and there. And the, I can't remember the last one I was working with. Uh, it's been about five years, six years now since the last time I was working with a Linux uh, uh, GUI. And they have gotten good. The biggest problem is, is there's not enough software for them to get the masses into it because the masses aren't going to switch now. You know, they've got all their favorite programs. They do everything. It works. It works in Windows. The problems Windows has, they're irritating, but we work through them because we have the software we use to do everything is in Windows, and that software doesn't exist for Linux. And there are alternative softwares, like take, for example, Photoshop. You know, mm -hmm. Photoshop doesn't work in Linux, but GIMP works in Linux. If you learn GIMP and you can unlearn everything you know about Photoshop and get used to GIMP, you there there's your main switch. And if that's the only reason you use Windows was because of Photoshop and you learn GIMP, there's a reason you can switch out of Windows. You know, so it's it just boils down to what works for you and what software do you want to run. If I'd chose a different path at the beginning of this and stayed with Linux, I might never be using Windows now. There are people that have stayed Linux their entire career. It's like there's people that have stayed Apple their entire career because they get used to the software there. But Makes sense. That's basically what it boils down to. What software are you going to run? And security, it's all the same. Same problems, just different amounts of attacks on them. Okay. All right. Well, that wraps everything up. That's all we got. We'll call it a show. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. Greatly appreciate it. Linux, Corel Linux. Corel Linux, a for a Denbian Linux by the Corel Draw. I remember, I, I vaguely remember hearing about Corel Linux. Yeah. So there, there's lots of things that have been tried out there. See that's the that's the thing that's the thing about it. The Hemdian has a has one comment in here we should bring forward that's relevant to this. I want to spend my time using my PC to do stuff, not spend my time keeping my PC running in the first place. Which yeah. is part of the problem of some of the OSs out of the OSs out there, you know, drivers aren't made for them. It's like in the beginning of this, you didn't have drivers. We didn't have printer drivers. When I first started, you had to go fetch a printer driver. Sometimes you had to write a printer driver. Hmm. You know, when I first started into this stuff, nothing, there were no standards. It didn't work together. And slowly the standards developed. And then Microsoft coalesced around everything. They managed to get the market. And they, yeah. they started demanding standards for people to put their programs because they were selling computers by the bushel load. You know, people were using them. The people who supplied programs made them for Windows. And so they had to make them to standards. You know. At any rate, that's it. We'll call it a wrap. Thanks again, everyone. Greatly appreciate it. A little bit of music to take us out of here. These are the days of thunder. We're going to make time stand still. <laughs> Come.
There we go. That's all we got for you now. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Adios, mofo.